So let's continue on with uh, fermentation. So fermentation is similar to aerobic respiration. Uh, it's going to be the it's going to be the oxidation of glucose again, stripping of electrons from glucose to gain some energy, uh, and it starts with glycolysis. Right, so we have our infamous arrow. I'm going to do this one fast now because we just did it. We've done it in class. ADP becomes ATP by a substrate level phosphorylation. NAD plus is the electron carrier, uh, oxidizes glucose, in it itself gets reduced to become NADH, and we make pyruvic acid. Okay, so that's uh, the similarity with aerobic respiration. It starts off this way. Uh, unlike aerobic respiration, however, all it does is this way. So fermenters only get energy via substrate level phosphorylation. That's the only energy they're going to make. The rest of fermentation is going to be to try to regenerate NAD+. Because if we let this go and keep going, we're going to run out of NAD+, eventually. And so that's where fermentation comes in. So in order to, uh, to get back, it's uh, NAD+. NADH reduces... Uh, pyruvic acid, right? Pyruvic acid is our final electron acceptor. So the final electron acceptor. It's just an F and a D. Becomes, and then when NADH gets oxidized or gives up that electron to NAD plus, any, I'm oh, sorry, pyruvic acid becomes NAD plus, which then goes back and can now oxidize the next incoming glucose. So then this process can happen continually. Uh, when pyruvic acid gets uh, reduced, uh, various things can happen. It can become lactic acid or uh, ethanol and carbon dioxide. I'm just going to abbreviate that. Or citric acid or something. Some sort of organic molecule end product. And the name of the type of fermentation that occurs depends on the organism. And the name of the fermentation is named after the end product. So lactic acid fermentation uh, forms lactic acid, ethanol fermentation forms ethanol carbon dioxide, citric acid fermentation forms citric acid, but regardless of which they use the same uh, final electron acceptor, the pyruvate at the end of uh, glycolysis. A uh, couple other distinctions between this and uh, aerobic respiration is that it uh, doesn't require oxygen. So oxygen is not required. <coughs> um, so it can happen with oxygen or it can happen without oxygen. However, because uh, aerobic respiration gets so much more energy than fermentation, right, we, all we do is make the 2 ATP here as opposed to uh, aerobic respiration which should make 36 to 38 uh, ATP per glucose molecule. Uh, if an organism can do both fermentation and aerobic respiration, the organism would prefer to do respiration. So in the case of some types of fermentations, like let's say ethanol fermentation or lactic acid fermentation, if we want to do the fermentation and we put this organism into an aerobic environment, it's not going to ferment. It's going to do aerobic respiration instead. Get a lot more energy, it's a lot more worth it for the organism to do that. So in this case, uh, often in fermentations, what we do is we shut off the oxygen, so then we make sure that the fermenters that can do both only ferment because fermentation can happen without oxygen but again in the oxygen environment if it can have if it has a choice of doing fermentation versus aerobic respiration it would prefer to do aerobic respiration okay, I think that's all I need to say about uh, fermentation so I'll come.